Hey guys, welcome back to Kids for Code. Today we'll be going over while and do while loops for Java beginners. So first off, we'll review the summary questions from last time. So number one, write an if statement to check if num books and num pencils are equal to each other. Um, now, based off the question, we can probably assume that num books and num pencils are going to be integers, right? Because it's number of books, number of pencils. Um, so in that case, we can write the if statement like this if num books equals equals num pencils. And we use equals equals to check uh, if numbers are equal to each other. So it'll also work with doubles. Um, so number two, does this uh, expression return true or false? Well, let's look at this. So 100 less than 110, that is true. However, there is a um, exclamation point on the outside. So that will actually flip this entire thing to be false. Um, now the other side of the pipes, we have zero less than three, and that's false. Or sorry, zero greater than three, and that is false. So both sides are false. That means the entire thing is gonna end up being false. Um, now remember with pipes, only one side has to be true in order for the entire thing to be considered true. Uh, so now this one, we see and with and, both sides have to be true in order for the entire thing to be true. Um, so we immediately see that seven is not less than seven. That that's false. So that means that the entire thing is end up false. Okay. So now, what is the difference between an if and else if statement? Well, an if statement has to go first. So if you have like an if and then followed by a bunch of like else ifs, uh, the if statement has to has to start the uh, start the latter. So you can't have you can't start with an else if. Uh, if has to be on top. It has to be the first one. And also, else if stop checking the statements below it if its condition is true or it's met. So if, um, for example, if I had if and then a bunch of else ifs under, as soon as that else if, as soon as one of the else ifs is true, it will um, stop checking all the else ifs below it. Um, so it'll just stop. Uh, it won't keep going. Whereas if I had all if statements, if I had pure if statements, just a, a ladder of if statements, then it'll check every single one, even though if one of the if statements ends up being true, it'll still keep going down the line and check all of them. So that's the difference. So how do you check if two strings are equal? Well, we have string one dot equals string two. Um, now there's also a bonus in here. So how about if they aren't equal? Uh, so we'll go over the first part. So string one dot equals string two. Um, you don't have to use string one and string two. These are just variable names. Remember, variables, you can call them whatever you want. Um, so that's how you check if they're equal. So uh, if they are equal, this entire thing will be true. Okay, so now if they aren't equal, well, if I had string one, let's say it equals hello. And then let's say string two is hi. Uh, so that means that this inner part would be false, right? Because hello is not hi. Um, and then it'll actually flip it. So we see an exclamation mark. So it'll flip the false and turn it into true. So basically what it's saying is it is true that string one does not equal string two. So that's why it works. So now we'll go over the new stuff of day, which is uh, loops. So often in programming, uh, we wanna keep executing the same block of code over and over again. Um, so loops do this so we can execute the same code over and over again um, as long as a condition is true, or that's the same thing as saying until a condition is broken, so until it's false. So um, that saves us uh, having to write the same code over and over again. So while loops. So a while loop is a loop that keeps going while a certain condition is true. So it's in the name. And um, so look at this diagram on the right here. So start, that's just where it starts. And then it'll check is condition true. So um, this, this can be whatever condition. Um, it's just like an if statement. So it's the same uh, format as an if statement. So we have like the, um, uh, the counter less than or equal to 10. That, that can also fit in an if statement, right? So it's the same thing. So then if it's true, then it'll uh, execute the code. And then after it executes the code, it will jump straight back up and check the condition again. So that is uh, how we keep going. Um, that's how we keep looping, right? It's a cycle. So um, it'll keep going, it'll keep executing code and checking the condition um, until the condition ends up false. 
So when it's false, it'll break out and the loop will stop. Um, so now this is the example in Java. So we already kind of went over this. So we have in counter equals zero and then counter less than or equal to 10. So remember, same as an if statement. And then what's inside is what's uh, the code that's executed, it's this part. So we have system.out.println uh, will print out the counter value. Um, and then note, no, this is very important. So we have to increment the counter um, every time we uh, execute the code. Um, we have to do this, otherwise we'll end up with an infinite loop. So if we didn't have counter plus plus here, counter would forever be zero and zero is gonna be forever less than uh, less than or equal to 10. So our loop would never end. And that's what, that's why we call it an infinite loop. And we'll take a look at all this in Eclipse right now. Okay, so here I have the exact same code that's on the PowerPoint. Um, so we have int counter equals zero. So remember it starts at zero. And then we have, um, well actually I'll get rid of this. And I will, okay, now it's the same. Um, so now if we run this, we have a uh, counter printing all the way from zero to 10. And um, so that, that, that is a functioning loop, right? It goes up to 10, including 10, and it'll print out all the numbers in between. Um, so now if we took away the equals, we see that it only goes up to nine. Now the reason is because as soon as counter becomes 10, like when it gets incremented into 10, it'll check 10 less than 10, which is false. And therefore the loop will end and it won't execute. So that's why it stops at nine and not 10. So if I put an equals here, then it'll stop at 10 because when it gets incremented into 10, 10 is less than or equal to 10. Therefore it'll go one more time. So, um, so that's why it stops at 10 here in this example. Um, and if you get rid of this, it'll stop at nine. So just keep that in mind. And I'll also show you what an infinite loop looks like. So let's, uh, let's try getting rid of this. So let's see what happens. If we run this. Okay, so you can see that uh, counter is always gonna be zero, right? Because if you're not changing counter, zero is always gonna be less than 10. So that's why it goes on forever. Um, so now to stop it, because we don't want this to crash our computer, um, we click terminate here in the top right of your console window. If you click that, it'll stop it, it'll kill the program um, so it doesn't run anymore. And always do this whenever you get an infinite loop um, because you don't want to keep it running for too long. Um, otherwise, it might crash your computer. So that's why we need to add the uh, counter plus plus here. So uh, yeah, that is, that is basically a while loop. Um, and now I'll go over do while loops. So sometimes we want to guarantee that our uh, loop code executes before the condition is actually checked. So what I mean by that, so if we look at the diagram again, we see code inside body. Um, so notice how the code is executed before the condition is checked. Um, so if the condition ended up being false, you would actually, you'd, you would already gotten this off. You would have already executed it once. Um, it just wouldn't execute again because the condition would end up being false and it would quit out, right? So that's what I mean by it guarantees that the code's executed because it'll, it'll execute it before the condition's even looked at. Um, so that's, what, that's a do while loop as opposed to a while loop. See, as a while loop, we see we check the condition and then we execute code, but in a do while loop, we execute the code and then check the condition. So it's different. Um, so you can go through these steps, execute code and check condition. That's the main part is that you're executing the code first. Everything else is the same. Um, so this is how we write in Java. We write do and then the curly brace and then uh, finishing off curly brace here. And we, add, we tack on the while at the end with uh, close out with a semicolon and the condition. Um, so that's how you write a do while loop. And we'll look at this in Eclipse as well. So we'll do that right now. Um, so if we expand this, okay, um, we will block that out for now. So here is a, uh, do while loop and, uh, we can actually run this code and see where it gets us. 
Oh, we have a little bit more space here for the console. Okay, so now if we click run, say enter an option, right, right here, type zero to exit. So it's telling us, oh, okay, if we enter zero, it'll put out the loop, right? So if we enter one, um, it'll print out option one, right? Because if option equals equals one. And then uh, if we keep entering, we can keep doing one, two, one, whatever, one or two. It'll keep going because it's a loop. Um, so now it actually quit out, right? We need to enter zero. So we enter zero here, we'll see that it quits. See, terminated. That means that your program's over and we, we can't, uh, it's not giving us the prompt. So that, that's how we know we're done. Um, so option, um, as you can see, if option is zero, zero does not equal zero, right? Uh, that's true. Zero, I mean, sorry, that's false. Um, so zero, that means that the while loop will quit out because it's false. So that's why, that's why it ends correctly. Um, so if we run this again and we type in zero, we see that it terminates um, and we can, we can do this forever. So that is a do while loop. So it will guarantee to execute it first, guarantee to print this out first um, before the condition is checked. It's guaranteed to execute all this code. So now we'll look at why it's different from a while loop. So here I have the exact same thing. So at, at first glance, it looks the exact same at least. Um, so I will zoom out a bit so you can see both. Um, so as you can see, at first glance, uh, these two uh, loops look like they do the exact same thing. So one of them is a do while, one of them is a while. Um, so we can actually run. We'll, we'll run the, the second loop. We'll run the bottom loop. So we'll, we'll comment all this out. Um, we'll run the second loop and see, see where it takes us. So we'll run it. And as you can see, it says terminate. That, that means that our program's done. There's nothing more. So the reason why this happens is because we started option at zero. So this condition will end up being false. Um, because it's not equal to zero. So if it's false, then that means that it quit out of the loop. Um, so it not, none of this code gets executed because it checks the condition first. So now if we um, go back to do while loop, you can see, okay, so the stuff gets printed out. That's because we guaranteed that um, this part will execute before the condition is checked. Um, so that is the difference. That's why we want to use a do while loop sometimes because this part is executed before the condition is checked. So, if, um, so as we just saw with this, the condition is checked first. Um, however, our option already starts at zero, so that means the loop quits without doing anything. Uh, so that is the difference. So now I'll go over some summary questions. So number one, what do we use loops for? Uh, number two, why do we need to make sure to change the condition variable when looping? So by condition variable, we mean, um, whoops, we mean like this variable, for example, right here, counter, right? It's the con it's in the condition, it's the variable. Also options, stuff like that. So yeah, uh, why we need to make sure we change that when we're looping. And number three, what is the difference between a while and do while loop? So that is very important to know. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for uh, this lesson. Uh, see you guys next time, bye.